mentioned right at the top of the broadcast that we were going to bring in our frequent contributor, Mr. Avi Loeb from Harvard, to talk a little bit about um, this controversy regarding Atlas. Um, Avi, thank you so much for coming back on the show. We always love having you here. You always expand our minds and our thoughts. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So as I understand it, there is a Florida congresswoman who is now petitioning NASA to release some previously unreleased data uh, regarding, regarding Atlas. Um, and tell me your thoughts on the letter that she wrote to NASA and also um, the fact that we don't have that information right now, what you think it actually says about what they have. Yes, yeah, so this is uh, Congresswoman uh, Ana Paulina Luna, who is an advocate for science, and I very much salute her for that. I, I was in contact with her uh, before she sent the letter, and I'm very happy that she did so. Uh, but we didn't receive a response to the letter. Uh, instead, the acting administrator of NASA, Sean Duffy, responded to a tweet by Kim Kardashian. And uh, uh, in recent days, uh, Representative Luna met with uh, some officials uh, at NASA and they explained to her that uh, this is a result of the government shutdown, that because of a bureaucratic reason they are unable to release the images that were taken on October 2nd and 3rd by the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. That's when 3i Atlas, the interstellar visitor, uh, was passing within uh, 29 million kilometers from Mars. These are the highest resolution images that we have uh, with uh, about 30 kilometers per pixel resolution. The previously best image was from the Hubble Space Telescope, which a resolution that is at least three times worse. So we are waiting for that. In the meantime, the European Space Agency released their images and the Chinese Space Administration uh, released their images uh, from a camera that is inferior to NASA's high-rise camera. So uh, uh, we are still waiting. Um, uh, apparently, it's a result of uh, some bureauc bureaucracy within government. Uh, what I don't understand is why isn't there someone who says, uh, uh, you know, science should not be sabotaged by the politics of the day. Uh, after all, the scientists engaged in the retrieval and the analysis of that data, some of them are at universities. Uh, the University of Arizona hosts the principal investigator of the high-rise camera. At any event, irrespective, we move on. And 3i Atlas did uh, 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 something really important over the past week. It passed uh, close to the sun, uh, closest to the sun, that's called perihelion. And as a result of that, it was heated by um, 770 watts per square meter and uh, uh, some uh, observatories moving around the sun uh, noticed that it uh, became uh, five times brighter than it was before approaching the sun. So that makes it um, uh, unusual. Uh, and also it was bluer than the sun, which is very surprising because uh, the surface temperature of the Atlas at its distance from the sun is 20 times smaller than the surface temperature of the sun. So it should have appeared red relative to the sun. Uh, also, if it has any dust around it, it should make it redder. Uh, but uh, for some reason, we know that it became bluer than the sun when it came close to the sun. And in addition, uh, it deviated from the path that we expected for it based on the action of gravity alone. And so that means that there is some other force that uh, was acting on it. And if it's a natural comet, the only force that can do that is a result of the outgassing and uh, the evaporation of ice on the surface of this uh, object uh, could give it a recoil because the evaporation takes place in the direction of the sun and the object should recoil in the opposite direction. And I calculated that the amount of evaporation was massive. Uh, at least 10% of the mass of the object had to be evaporated in order for it to gain this boost in velocity that was recorded around that time. And uh, that means that if it's a comet, a natural comet, then there should be a massive cloud of gas and dust around it, weighing at least uh, 5 billion tons. Mm. And it would be really difficult to miss it. 
so when it came closest to the sun, the earth was on the opposite side. We couldn't really see it. It was hiding behind the sun last week, but now it's coming into view. Uh, and then uh, in the coming days and weeks, we should be able to tell if there is a massive cloud of gas and dust around it. If not, then maybe that uh, uh, non-gravitational acceleration was a result of some engine, some propulsion. Uh, and uh, I should also say that uh, in recent days, there were, there were some images taken of three atlas from a telescope in Spain, and they do not indicate a clear cometary tail uh, away from the sun surrounding it. So uh, we're still waiting to see if that will indeed be the case in the coming days and weeks. And uh, the next time uh, to wait for is December 19th. Uh, that's when 3A Atlas will come closest to Earth. And that's just six days before Christmas. And let's all hope that it will not deliver any unwanted gifts for the holidays. Oh, my goodness. You, there, there's so much to what you just said. I, and I'm, now I'm stuck on an unwanted gift for the holidays here. But let me just kind of break the, this down piece by piece here because it's being described as a Manhattan-sized comet. Um, let me ask you this. I mean, we you mentioned the the aspect of you know, even even Kim Kardashian coming into this. What what do you think the controversy around this is is really about? Do you think it's about the science of it all, um, the the culture of it all? Like who who actually gets to shape the future of space research? Well, you get a glimpse at how uh, science is done. What happens very often is that the, the mainstream or a group of scientists that are the most vocal uh, adopt the most likely interpretation of the data that we have. Now, that doesn't mean that they are right, that they are correct. They just adopt the most likely interpretation based on their experience. And if we have a blind date uh, with an interstellar object that we've never seen before, it could be different than what they're advocating. But they would advocate based on their experience of comets and asteroids from the solar system, they would say, it's a comet. It's just a different comet than the one we are familiar with. Even if it has a lot of anomalies, they would still call it a comet, just because that's their vocabulary. That's what they're used to. Now, what they're missing is that when there is a visitor to our backyard, we must take seriously the possibility that it might be technological because the implications would be huge to humanity. Uh, you know, that visitor can come up through our front door. So we have to consider even the less probable possibilities because of implications to society. And that's something that scientists fail to recognize because, you know, most of the time astronomers discuss objects that are billions of light years away. And if they get it wrong based on their most probable interpretation, it doesn't affect our daily life. But here we have an example of an object that is close to us. And if they get it wrong, even if there is only a few percent chance that it's not a comet of natural origin, we must take these few percent uh, likelihood that it's a technological object very seriously, because that's what the intelligence agencies are doing all the time when there is a threat of a terrorist attack. Most of the time, it doesn't materialize, but they take it seriously mm -hmm. and they analyze as much data as possible to rule out that possibility because of the implications it has to society. And scientists are not used to that. If, if they have some interpretation that is, let's say, 95, 97 percent likely, they will just stick to that and ridicule and remove any discussion on alternative because that's the most likely explanation. But what they are missing is when there is a study that has implications to society, we must consider the alternative and collect as much data as possible to rule it out. Or if it turns out to be true, then we need to decide about how to respond to it. So you believe this could be extraterrestrial? I believe it, it well, it's definitely extraterrestrial, that it could be technological because it has 10 anomalies. It's very big, a, a million times more massive than the first interstellar object that was discovered eight years ago. It's also following a path that is aligned with the plane of the planets around the sun. Uh, it also had a jet that was pointed at the sun during July and August, instead of pointing away from the sun, as we expect for cometary tails. 
and uh, it had uh, shed uh, nickel with very little iron. And that is uh, not something that we see in other comets. We've never seen it. Uh, and the only other place where we see nickel with very little iron is in industrial production of nickel alloys. And so there are lots of anomalies. It also came from the direction of the wow signal from 1977. Uh, there are no strange facts about this object. And all I'm saying is the likelihood of it being different than a natural comet is not very small. It's not extremely small because why would it choose a path that is aligned with the planets? That, why would it come so close to Mars and then uh, Venus and then Jupiter? Perhaps it's on a reconnaissance mission. Even if the likelihood is small, we must consider that possibility because the implications are large. And I should say that I'm getting hundreds of emails every day from people all over the world. Many of them are parents who tell me that their kids are now excited to become scientists. Mm. They are asking for a telescope for the holidays as a gift. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it's one way to let the public appreciate the process of science, which is collecting evidence, collecting data that would guide us as to the right answer, not pretending to know the answer in advance. Uh, because the foundation of science is the humility to learn, not the arrogance of expertise. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned strange facts, so I'm going to ask you what may seem as a strange question. Um, if you built an alien ship, Avi, would you disguise it as a rock? or how would you camouflage it? Well, that's an interesting question because we all know about the Trojan horse uh, that looked very innocent to the uh, residents of the city of Troy and then brought uh, a, a catastrophe to them. And, and so uh, we should be suspicious. Now, we can figure out if there is anything inside the rock that might be suspicious, uh, especially if the rock is disintegrating near the sun. So if it lost, uh, you know, 20% of its mass and it still looks like a rock, then, uh, you know, if it walks like a duck, walks like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> uh, so I would say that unless we detect a, a clear technological signature, for example, a radio transmission or some artificial lights, or we see that it maneuvers, or it releases some probes that arrive to the planets, the Earth or Mars. And I encourage NASA to look around Mars with the orbiters, the rovers, to see if there are any new objects that arrive there. Or, of course, my research team of the Galileo project, we check for any unusual activity near Earth that, uh, came, uh, that uh, is in the months ahead after uh, three atlas passed nearby. Um, so um, if we don't see any of those technological signatures and we do see the, the clear signatures of uh, a comet, then it's a comet. Then I would uh, remove any concerns about this particular object. But we should keep that possibility in mind for future visits as well. Okay, I want to circle back around to the cultural aspect of this um, before I let you go here. Um, back to Kim Kardashian. So she did get a response. Were you a little upset or you know, did, did it kind of come as a, um, a slap in the face that you did not get a response from NASA? Not at all. Um, I actually extended an invitation to Kim to join my research team on 3i Atlas because she seems uh, curious about it. Uh, the uh, acting administrator Duffy responded to her and said, uh, it's a comet. No, nothing to do with aliens. So he was very dogmatic in his response. He's not a scientist. He just represents sort of the uh, folklore of, uh, of the mainstream right now. Uh, but I, uh, in response, I offered her to join my team and uh, we can figure it out together based on the evidence we have. So the fact that she's curious is a very positive aspect because uh, you know, I see science as an opportunity to maintain our childhood curiosity. It shouldn't be dogmatic. We shouldn't pretend that we are the experts that know the answers in advance. It's just like a detective story. We have some evidence. We're trying to interpret it, to figure things out. And I would love uh, to have Kim on my team. It's a very sincere offer. I haven't heard back from her, but I put it on medium.com as one of my essays. 
Well, uh, it would be you, her, and her uh, 354 million followers on Instagram trying to figure it out for sure. <laughs> yeah, all of them are welcome. <laughs> Professor Love, we appreciate you as always. Uh, these conversations with you are always uh, <laughs> entertaining to say the least, but, but truly, truly um, opening our eyes to some, some new things. Thanks for having me. Okay, thank you. And, and keep us in the loop if you do hear from her. Let us know. Definitely. You will be the first to know if something unusual happens. All right. Thank you, you, you so and much. Kim, you and Kim Kardashian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, now I've got to ask you what order. Would I be the first or would she be the first? No, I'm playing. 